Hello my soccer universe welcome to the review. First review of the year for the Eredivisie but we also have quite some Ligue 1 and some Coupe de France in there as well and yes there have been big results in other leagues some of which I will talk about this week. Um, it is time that we look at these because there's also quite some interesting developments and I don't want this to become a PSG channel or this series of videos a PSG channel. Yes they have lost again and this time playing with all their superstars. Um, but I strongly feel that I have to spread it out a little bit. Liga is not only PSG, although most of the media attention goes there. There are also quite some interesting developments there because uh, actually with Rennes beating PSG and the Rennes is, uh, reminds me a little bit about Sevilla over the past few years. It's always frustrating that I think they could do so much. They could do so much, but then they had a rough loss in the midweek only to follow it up with a big win over PSG. So um, take it what it is, uh, but we have actually potentially a title race at the hands. Yes, it is still very much PSG is to lose with a three point lead, but there is OM in there and there is loss in there that keep on it being in there. And you know, there's also a Monaco team that seems to be firing. So many, many interesting things happening. I'm also uh, quite happy that a team like Strasbourg finally seems to get something going that Nantes also moving slowly out from the bottom. And as, as I always said, a relegation fight in Ligue 1 this year is a special one because we have four relegated teams because the league will be reduced, which means there will be some really, really hard um, relegation battles happening as well. However, as you saw from the thumbnail, to me the biggest story is that for the first time, and yes, my calculations, as you will see, there is one slight glitch in there that I cannot get at the moment into my calculations, the current ELO rating. So uh, it's the ratings are not 100% reflective, but you know, it will only be small changes. But for the first time in this season, we Ajax are not the title favorites. Ajax again dropping points. The Eredivisie started with all the big three teams, four if you count AZ in there, dropping points. And then uh, Feyenoord, who already had the lead going into the World Cup Cup break, get a big win where Ajax uh, hang on to a nil-nil draw and uh, PSV also managed to throw away a lead at Sittard which makes it kind of interesting what's going to happen in the Eredivisie. Air Will we get uh, the Ajax monopoly broken? And it's very in interesting that, PS uh, that PSV is kind of falling away. Yes, they lost probably their best player in Hakpo. But that Feyenoord, who also have suffered quite some some, some losses, but that the good uh, work by Arne Slot seems to be finally rewarded and there's a potential title push in there. Reminds me a bit of what Arsenal is doing in the Premier League. And we will start in the Eredivisie. I already said the first round back, uh, first full January weekend. We had really all the big teams drawing. We had Azet uh, mostly dominating the game against uh, pa um, Vitesse. And after Pavlivis finally gave, 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 gave them a lead, you really thought they will hang on. But then uh, Sanko gets an equalizer late. And it's Azet dropping point, points. But again, uh, and this seems to be a league where Azet actually could potentially do some, so something if they would get results. Uh, PSV wasted tons of chances against Sparta. Um, in the end, they have to be satisfied with a nil-nil. Uh, Utrecht also having for the longest of times a lead against Feyenoord uh, through Tunstra or in the third minute and Jahan, Jahan Baksh, uh, Baksh gets in the 90th the equalizer so kind of salvaging a point for Feyenoord. Ajax starts the new year actually quite good and scored a brilliant goal through uh, David Klaas and Tadic assisting in there. All looked nice except for 15 minutes after the uh, interval. They give up a rather simple equalizer uh, through the Mato and then they pressure uh, press again but cannot find the winner. So this was kind of a first sign. Yes, Ajax maybe not get it again result, but they looking kind of right. But as we see, it uh, did not continue this way because on this past weekend, um, at least AZ get a win over Herrenveen. Um, which was back, but Ajax uh, go down um, in the 35th, 35th minute. Um, with a red red card, a man down, uh, a wrench being uh, held, and then they basically, with one man less against a good Twente side, it was always gonna be 
Hey, struggle. Um, then the other one, as I said, PSV uh, were also down uh, at the half. Uh, Cordoba giving a, a lead to uh, Sitter. However, Erdogan is sent off in the 56 and then they turn around through Xavi Simons and Sangare. 76 minutes, you think they are flying, but then they give up a penalty that Yilmaz uh, is converting very, very late in the 98th minute. So basically the nerves are there. And as I said already, the big thing is that of course uh, Gakpo is gone from PSV. I think they they kind of have the focal point missing up front, but there's still a lot of talent in there. And with all these points dropped left and right, Feyenoord goes to Groningen, Peshaw, Kokchu, and then very late on Jimenez get the win for Feyenoord in a duel that had very green jerseys. <laughs> Overall, you saw it in, 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 in the thumbnail. So yeah, uh, it is really very much all going Feyenoord's way at this very moment. Uh, they have a four-point lead over AZ, more importantly, a five-point lead over Ajax. So they are already uh, halfway champions. And PSV is level with Ajax in there. Um, so you see... It's a very unusual top of the table for now, and we have a 44% chance that Feyenoord are winning this. Uh, you can also look at the bottom, uh, Vitesse is still in there, also Groning is a big name team that is in there. The other teams are probably a little bit more expected. Sparta Rotterdam, uh, going uh, to at number 6 uh, as well, is a team that was in a relegation battle uh, last season, they are now pushing for, for Europe. So things can change a lot. Expected standings. For the first time this year, Feyenoord are top. A point expected ahead of Ajax. That is a big point. And I said it at the, at the end of last season with PSV winning the Dutch Cup. Um, and with all the changes with Ten Hag going to United, doing good things there at, at the moment. That this could be really a turning point in the Eredivisie for maybe the next few years. Gotta see how it pans out, but at the moment it's Feyenoord, then Ajax, PSV, only in the Europa League, where they usually ended up as of late. We have a big one come, coming up on the next weekend, Sunday, 2.30 Central Euro, European time. We have the Klassica between Rod, uh, Feyenoord and Ajax. Uh, doesn't get better than that. Ajax desperately will need a win in that one if they have any chance, want to have any chance to at least not letting Feyenoord go away. It's also a huge chance for Feyenoord. If they win this one, then probably the biggest contender is already gone. And uh, with PSV playing a uh, not so easy duel against Vitesse, although Vitesse are uh, down there, uh, there's a real chance for um, F uh, Feyenoord even extending their lead. Big chance. The question is whether will, they will do it. There's another good one between uh, Twente and Utrecht as well. And then AZ can pull a little bit off. I'll give you two more rounds here, uh, which are then a midweek and so on, because I think uh, before that I probably will not do a video, uh, maybe a short video on the um, on the Klassiker. Uh, but you see that the Feyenoord have to play at home to Nijmegen, uh, Amen host PSV, Ajax against Volendam, and go at Eagles against AZ. So this should be a rather more straightforward forward round, but it's never that straightforward in most cases. Uh, and then a similar thing, except that Feyenoord have, have a really tough op opponent uh, in 20 uh, on the 29th of January. So that might be a potential stumbling block where the other ones have more or less winnable games. Moving over to the hexagon uh, in France, I will do the cup action uh, at the end of, of the video. Let's talk about uh, what happened midweek. Uh, uh, Toulouse get a pretty big win over Auxerre. Uh, they are then Clermont Foot, uh, 2 1 win over Stade Rennes. But again, as, as, as Stade Rennes had players sent off, uh, which probably helped a little bit uh, in that win. But it was a little, little bit of a shocker. Lyon, 0 0 again, against Nantes. Definitely a result more for Nantes. Lyon cannot get anything on Lyon. I, 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 I get a team truly in crisis at, at this moment. Uh, Lorient, uh, Pesky as always, fight for a 2-2 two -two draw with Monaco. Nice, another pretty big win. We had a couple of big wins uh, over the, um, this past week in uh, Liga. 6-1, Nice over Montpellier. PSG uh, get an early goal through Equitique, then there's a whole lot of nothing, and then Messi scores one that initially was given an offside. Of course, Messi being um, 
how to say, he was not officially greedy because that happened in training, uh, but there were, ce there were celebrations for him and for his achievement of finally being uh, back. Neymar had also a goal. This allowed uh, Strasbourg, as I said, a fighting hard, getting a 2-2 against loss, uh, finding himself first down, then getting it ahead. The first, uh, from the 11th to the 16th, there were three goals scored. First uh, loss, take, take a lead, and immediately the equalizer, Gamero giving a lead. And then Openda in the 33rd, uh, getting the equalizer again. So rather entertaining game there. And Troa cannot hold Marseille. Uh, Marseille very, 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 very much also in a very good role. Igor Tudor doing really good work there. Mbemba and Veretu scoring their two goals. And once Veretu in the 46 made, made it to nil. There was actually not really a way back for Troa. Uh, and OM cons continued their good form with a 3 1 over Lorient. Despite being down, they have controlled the game with the first shot and goal, Mofi. Gives Lorient the lead, but then Kolasinac uh, heads it in for an equal before they have, and then right after they have Sanchez and Vere 2 again. Vere 2, a, a really nice, a nicely taken goal. Um, make it a 3 1. And as I said, the Marseille are really going at the moment strong from strength to strength, and that is always good for the French league. Uh, uh, before that game, we had Lars uh, squeaking uh, past Auxerre with a 1-0 win, kind of keeping up with the top of, of the table. And then Lyon against Rasburg, it's just a horror show for Lyon. Uh, <laughs> finding themselves down very quickly, uh, you know, two, two goals in three minutes, 29, 30, 30 seconds, gives Strasbourg a 2 nil. like I said, with a penalty before the break, can pull, pull it back, but it's not happening. Lyon are a club deeply in crisis. As far as I know, uh, there's a new management take, take, take over. It feels a bit Chelsea-like at this point in, in time and a major rebuild is needed. Huge win for Lille, 5-1 over Troyes. So uh, Lille also doing uh, stuff. We have uh, not getting a big win, 3-0 at Montpellier. Um, Monaco, 7-1 against Ajax, so. That's an exclamation point. And actually, it is very, very weird because despite Monaco getting, getting that win, uh, uh, despite uh, Monaco winning, no, I'm saying this wrong, despite Rennes winning against PSG, we will see that Monaco overtook took to Matteo because of on, on, on goal difference. I actually flipped back and forth uh, between Rennes and PSG uh, and uh, the NFL playoffs because there was also a really good uh, game between the Bills and, and uh, the Dolphins. Um, but from what I could see is that PSG was not their usually fluid selves. Yes, it also was. And Mbappe and Hakimi also came, only came on in the second half. Yes, it was Messi, it was Neymar stars, uh, starting. But the conditions were, weren't right. They were definitely more playing in Rennes' favor. And whenever Rennes... Rennes is a solid team that you cannot take easy. And that's exactly what, what happened. Truffaut uh, assist Raul Rennes 65th to make it a 1-0. There was not really the big equalizing chance in there. So uh, again, this is one of one of those where you really have to ask ask yourself if you're a PSG fan or if you are the coach, what actually happened there? Why can't we just uh, show up better? Because we have a whole lot more talent, but it was not meant to be a rainy night in the Bretagne. It's probably not to uh, the superstars liking, especially when you just won the World Cup and were in sunny Buenos Aires. Um, so on the table, it's still very much PSG's, uh, but we have Lance and Marseille now in there with a teeny tiny chance, maybe Lance being three points back, uh, Marseille being five points back, and then Monaco and Rennes. Uh, you know, those are two teams that I could imagine getting on a run. Lille is also up there. Uh, so things are growing. It could get really interesting, but it's also interesting very much on the bottom where Strasbourg now move out of the rally regression. This was a team that was almost in European con uh, con competition last last season, only not winning the cup. Didn't uh, help, help up there. And you know, to lose not might look safe-ish uh, at, at the moment, but you could still see them potentially drag, dragged in. It's almost half the league is in a relegation battle. It really looks bad for Angier, Auxerre and Ajax. So I, I would say, and Brest stint up to, uh, in the top league also might finally come to an end, which is a little, a little bit sad, especially since I have a working colleague from Brest there. Um, 
the expect that is exactly Brest, Ajax, Auxerre, Angers, the Santa Rosa, the four teams that are currently also in the bottom four uh, 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 of the league. And we have uh, OM pipping loss for the second spot and therefore the fixed uh, Champions League spot behind PSG, who is still by far in the way the most highly rated team. Um, upcoming games we have uh, in um, two weeks already, we have Lorient play against Rennes, so that's a Breton do uh, a derby. When we look now, uh, Marseille have to play Monaco, that's a pretty big one. Lens have to uh, get it at Troyes. And then PSG against uh, Reims, yeah, should be a little bit of a foregone conclusion because at home usually PSG get the win. And then I give you also the one that is uh, in the midweek and maybe that's the time when I do another video. Let's see how it will go. My OM playing at Nantes. Pretty big duel there. Uh, we have a PSG at Montpellier. We have Monaco against Auxerre and we have Lens against Nice. So all interesting ties. Also, I have to talk a little bit about the cup round. There was the first one of a little bit of an upset. You know, there's no overtime in the French, French Cup. So it went straight to penalties. Angers winning against Strasbourg. A uh, teeny bit of an upset at that, at that point. But there were bigger ones. We had, for instance... Um, Monaco losing to uh, second league side Rodé on penalties at home. That was one. Uh, we had a big duel between Bordeaux and Stade Rennes going uh, Rennes way. So yeah, but always the French Cup can be quite interesting. Um, the biggest result, and I don't have it in, uh, in, in the region, but you see it here, is the Strasbourg Königshofen. A sixth tier team made it to the next round. So that is the big one there. And they play again. Angers just played against the big team from Strasbourg. Now they have to play against the little team from Strasbourg, uh, also away from home. So I found this kind of in in interesting. Uh, the big tie in the next round is OM against Rennes. Uh, those are uh, clearly the two biggest teams in there. And other than that, yeah, you see a few interesting games here. I, I didn't even include the PSG game because it's a <laughs> rather for a uh, conclusion. But we have pressed against Lance, of course, in there as well. So, you know, a few interesting results uh, there. That was it for me for these two leagues. Lots to cover. Makes actually for a little bit of a longer video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything. And if I've missed some something, it's always good because um, it makes it even better. In any case, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!